right. Hello everybody, Mike Adkisson, and we are here today inside Brookfield Zoo's Animal Hospital, and we are taking a look at Tulum, one of our anteaters today. So she is currently in our CT scanner right now, and you can see images are still being pulled up here on the screen. Um, and what we're investigating today is she's had a swelling um, over the bones in one of her feet um, that we have been trying to determine the underlying cause for. So we've completed one CT scan on her a few weeks ago um, that showed some uh, uh, elevation and some irritation in the bone there that we've been investigating. So we are between scans right now so we can walk back in here. So you saw all of our staff come back in. Um, anytime we've got an animal um, in the CT room here, we can't actually have our staff in with them from a safety standpoint because we are using x-rays when we um, run the CT scan. So everybody has to step out while we're doing the scan and then people will come back in to check on the anesthesia uh, with the patient. Tulum's unfortunately kind of covered up right now, so you're not able to see a whole lot of her other than her tail sticking out here at the end. And the reason for that is that we're actually going to try and get some samples out of this um, joint today. So, Lynette, we can walk up here to the front and kind of take a quick look at what we've got going on here. So, it's this foot that we've got the concern about. You can kind of see the swollen area right here. And um, that's right where we're going to keep taking some CT images. And Dr. Allender is actually going to um, do some aspirates out of that joint under CT guidance. And the real advantage of this is that we can actually see the needle as it advances into the joint and into the bone. So we know exactly where we're getting those samples from and that can really help us with identifying the precise location where we wanna take those samples from. It is a procedure that we do um, under a sterile prep, which is why we've got her draped off right now so that we've got her covered just to keep things clean. And then we're actually gonna do a sterile prep over that um, foot itself in order to get things nice and clean so that we don't run the risk of introducing any new infection or new problem into that area. Right now what we're doing is we're just trying to get this sited appropriately. So Dr. Matt is actually gonna be taking a couple of very small needles to just place into the skin there. And this is gonna help us kind of narrow in exactly where we want our larger needle to go in when we um, actually go to collect the samples themselves. This is one of the more advanced uses that we use our CT scanner for. Most of our scans are more what we call a diagnostic uh, CT scan where we're really looking to try and understand what the problem is or we're evaluating the bo uh, bo bones or joints or the internal organs. But we can also use it in more of this uh, type of technique which is what we would call an interventional radiology technique. So we're actually using the scanner in kind of a real-time setting uh, to try and guide our, our treatments and our diagnostics and our therapeutics. So we're going to come back here to the scanner and I'm going to just do a couple quick manipulations here on the screen to get this to where we uh, want it to be. Um, and then we're going to rescan here and see what these, if we can uh, visualize these needles. Okay, so we're taking the next set of scans here. And this is hopefully gonna help us hone in a little bit better on that area of concern. We're gonna see the images pop up here on the other screen in a minute, and Matt's gonna take a moment to evaluate those and make sure that we're getting where we wanna be with these needles as we try and get into this specific area of concern. Um, okay, we're clear to go back in if you guys wanna go check back on the patient. this machine over here so we're gonna go ahead and pull up the scans that we just took a minute ago on Tulum. We're gonna need to do 102 to 115. Okay. Oh, oh hold on. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Um, all right so this is the images that we just got a minute ago and you can see the foot here and what we're looking at here so 
on this image we're basically looking at her foot in this plane in this particular screen here we're looking at her foot in this plane and in this one we're actually taking slices as if it were a loaf of bread so this is all letting us kind of see into this area of concern and really what we're looking at is some of this proliferative bone here on the surface Get it? It went, but... Still too short? Might be too short. Okay. Let me take one more here. All right. Is everybody still out? Everybody's out. Okay. So if we look at this image that just came up on the scout screen here, so we can see here, again, and we're looking at this as though it's a loaf of a bread slice. Um, our image just disappeared there as it's loading the next set in. So we'll come back over here to the other machine for a second and pull up this last set of images. It's reformatting the next set now. Well, we're going to be in a holding pattern for just a second. We have to love Facebook Live. It uh, <laughs> doesn't give us the chance to uh, time lapse things. So you're at the mercy of uh, waiting on the machine just like we usually are <laughs> to get these images processed. So it can acquire the images a whole lot faster than it can do these reformats and these reconstructions. So we're going to have to sit here for just a second while it's reformatting these images for us in order for us to know exactly where we need to go. But um, essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a needle into this particular area of abnormal bone within Tulum's foot to get a sample out of that. There's a couple different things that could be the cause of this. Um, our concerns are that we could have an infection that's localized down into one of these bones or joints that's causing some of this proliferation. It's also possible it's related to a more of a traumatic injury where she may have accidentally um, uh, banged her foot into something and that caused some bone irritation and inflammation and now that proliferative bone response is uh, starting to build up there. Um, but we're trying to get a sample of what's going on here in order to know how best to treat this. So we've got her on some pain medications right now to keep her comfortable and being able to walk normally on the foot, um, or we're trying to get her walking comfortably on the foot. Um, and then also we're trying to figure out if there's a different antibiotic or a different uh, medication that we should have her on if we do have an infection localized down into that bone. So that's the reason that we're trying to get this needle down into the bone um, in order to get this sample out. Um, the CT really lets us get a really good close look into that area and really lets us very precisely target that tissue so that we know exactly what we're getting. It makes it a lot safer for the patient than us trying to just sort of blindly guide a needle down into that area to take our aspirate. How long does it take to do a full body scan of, of uh, an anteater? That's a great question. So um, with the machine that we have right now here at the zoo, we could scan Tulum's whole body in, in about a minute. Um, so we really can get an incredible amount of information and knowledge um, very quickly. It lets us look at all of her joints, um, all of her bones to make sure everything's healthy. We see a lot of arthritis in older animals the same way we see arthritis in people. Um, it also lets us look at all of her internal organs and make sure that everything's healthy and functioning appropriately. What's the biggest animal you've ever had uh, in the CT scanner? The biggest animal, we've had a number of really large animals in our scanner here at the zoo. Um, uh, our polar bears, uh, Hudson, and uh, 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 Hudson has been through it, as well as some of our larger lions and tigers. Um, uh, Jojo, our silverback gorilla, has been through it. We've actually been able to even move some of our um, larger hoof stock through it as well. So um, Okapi, pygmy hippo, uh, tapers, all of these types of animals we can get through there. Our table will hold up to about 660 pounds. But then we also have a large animal table that actually slides into this machine as well that can take up to 2,200 pounds. So it really becomes more of a limit of how big of an animal we can fit through the opening in the machine versus the actual weight and size of the patient. I'm gonna take a second here with Dr. Matt and we're gonna try and pull up these most recent ones that have hopefully moved their way through the system now and see if we can 
narrow in a little bit better where we need to go. Do all of the animals get CT scans as part of, phys as part of physicals so or only question. when they need it? So we try and take advantage of the scanner as often as we can. So when we do have animals under anesthesia for a variety of different purposes, we really try and take full advantage of having the scanner here to get as much information as we can. So we do a lot of what we call just preventative CT scans. Um, in order to just get information on an animal when it's in a healthy state so that if we do run into a problem where they develop an abnormality or become sick, we've got some normal images from that animal to go back and compare to. So Tulum would be a great example here that if we had some images of her feet from when she was younger um, and before this problem had occurred, we'd be able to use those as a comparative set of images right here to really be able to evaluate exactly what had changed in this particular instance. Are all of the vets trained to care for all of the animals or are there certain people who have specialties? It's a great question. All of our vets do take care of all of the different animals here. So um, while we all certainly have our areas where we're a little more comfortable or our areas of expertise, um, all of us do work on all of the different animals here at the zoo. So that uh, is a wide variety of species, obviously, that we work with here at the zoo, um, but we all really enjoy that diversity. And it's one of the things that makes our job so rewarding is that every day is a different experience and a different set of animals to work with. Oh, what's the smallest animal that you've done a CT scan The smallest on? animal? We've had some of really tiny animals move through the scanner. Um, some of our smallest passerine birds, which are songbirds that may be only a about 100 grams. Um, we've had some small amphibians, frogs, and uh, small lizards move through the scanner. So many of those animals are smaller than a, a, than a mouse. Um, we definitely start to lose some resolution when we really start pushing down into those really tiny animals, but um, we're still usually able to get a pretty good look at the internal um, anatomy of those species. How many vets are at the zoo? Um, so we have four clinical veterinarians on our team that uh, provide the day-to-day -day care and then we also have a veterinary resident that's part of our team. So that's a veterinarian who has completed uh, their uh, general veterinary degree and usually in at least one if not two internships and is now in a three-year residency program uh, specializing in zoo and wildlife medicine. Um, everything looking good in there? Everything's good. Okay. Um, so, you want to take one more and yeah, get the go back a little bit further. Do so, we're going to take it uh, probably one more set of scans here before uh, we get into the part of the procedure here where we're really trying to take these aspirate samples just to make sure we've got everything covered. In the past, we've had a portable CT scanner that came in for uh, Layla Rhino. Are there any other animals you would do that with? So Layla was really a pretty unique set of circumstances where she was just too large for us to get over here to the building, um, into the animal hospital, and then to physically get into the room with our CT scanner. So that was what prompted us to uh, bring in that portable scanner to be able to take it patient side. But that's a really unusual set of circumstances. Almost all of the other animals here at the zoo, um, aside from our rhinos and our giraffes, um, we're really able to usually get them over here into the building and get the CT done that way. All right. All right. So we're going to um, uh, proceed with getting these aspirates. So we're going to say goodbye to everybody at this point. Um, Dr. Matt and I are going to go in here and finish up with Tulum. But uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us today on Facebook Live as we bring the zoo to you. Um, we always love showing you behind the scenes at the hospital here and giving you the chance to see some of the medical procedures we do with our animals. So uh, now that it's March, we're open up again here at the zoo and we hope to see all of you out here again soon.